a wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat new, and I guess already somewhat controversial study, that essentially claims the observations of what's known as negative time, as in time becoming negative. And though this might sound like, I guess, time travel, in this case the researchers make sure to highlight that this is not a time travel phenomenon, and so nothing in this case traveled back in time, but instead, this is a phenomenon observed in quantum physics, and a phenomenon that essentially illustrates how quantum world is just really surprising and very bizarre. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, but in this case, let's start with the study, the theory behind this, and what the scientists were trying to discover. And in this case, it's a study by Daniela Angulo and her team from University of Toronto, with the title, Experimental Evidence that a Photon Can Spend a Negative Amount of Time in an atom cloud. With apparently a lot of physicists getting somewhat upset about the title, but after I explain to you what the study is about, I guess you be the judge. Be the judge by leaving a comment below, basically telling me what you think. And so what exactly was this for, and what was the initial proposition? Well, here the idea was to explore the interactions between light and matter, and specifically the study of what's known as atomic excitations. Here this image by Peter Kuiper, shown as the excitation of copper oxides, basically explain how all of this works. In essence, here we have some kind of a photon passing through some kind of a medium, and sometimes these photons get absorbed by the electrons, causing them to jump from lower to higher energy levels, or essentially going from what's known as the ground state to some kind of an excited state. But after some time, these excited electrons usually return back to their ground state by releasing a photon of slightly different energy. In other words, after some time, these photons are re-emitted. And though all of this happens super quick, it does introduce a bit of a time delay for a typical photon traveling through medium. And so basically the researchers behind this study only had one purpose. They wanted to determine how long is this delay and what exactly happens to various photons inside this medium as they pass through an atomic cloud. Basically, are these photons absorbed? Are they scattered? Or are they transmitted without any interaction? Now, because previously all this was based on modeling and theories, the answer here was not yet clear. But we did have some initial propositions from back in 2023. And so here, Kyle Thompson and his team asked, how much time does a photon spend as an atomic excitation before being transmitted? But in order to answer this question, someone had to perform an experiment and basically try to measure this physically. And I guess that someone was Daniela Angulo and her team. And that's the apparatus they built. Here, it involved shooting photons using lasers through an extremely cold cloud of rubidium atoms. In this case, rubidium is known for a lot of quantum anomalies, and so it was basically a perfect atom to use. But the idea was to measure excitations in the rubidium, and to then try to time all of this by using a statistical analysis. And while researchers actually did expect to find something unusual, because we know that quantum physics does contain a lot of really bizarre phenomena. For example, we know that particles start to act as waves, we also know that particles can be connected and become entangled, and in one of the recent experiments that I think we'll be discussing really soon, researchers even discovered that certain properties of a particle can actually separate from the particle and technically become their own entities. It is a very complex study, so we'll actually talk about this in a separate video, and yeah, subscribe if you want to find out more. That video is coming out really soon. And so in this case, researchers kind of expected something, but they didn't expect what they discovered. In essence, once again, they discovered what's known as negative time, almost as if photons exited the material before entering it. But here I guess this has to be explained a little bit more. So first of all here it's important to understand that none of this was measuring individual photons. This was basically what's known as group delay. Here, in essence, it was a statistical measurement of all of the photons, passing through the cloud of rubidium. And because individually each of the photons is a quantum object and obviously possesses a lot of quantum effects by itself, here it would be impossible to apply any of these results to any of the individual photons. So basically we have to consider group results. Nevertheless, during this experiment, several results were kind of surprising. So first of all here the expectation was that as the photons pass through rubidium, some would interact with it and some maybe would do nothing basically passing through rubidium completely unaffected. But intriguingly, even though some photons were untouched, rubidium atoms would still become excited for just as long as the photons affected them. In other words, in some cases, rubidium atoms were basically acting without being acted on. Now once again, this is quantum physics, so unusual results are expected, 
But here we obviously have to see this as a kind of a probabilistic result. But an even more surprising result appeared when photons were absorbed and would actually be re-emitted instantly, even before rubidium atoms changed from their excited state to their ground state. And it's actually in this case that we kind of observe this negative time. So here, for some reason, in some cases, photons were actually leaving atoms quicker than expected, even before it should be physically possible. And once again here, we cannot make a mistake of thinking of them as individual photons or individual particles, because they're really not. All of this was based on average calculations and on values from individual photons adding up over time. But this does mean that in some cases, photons absorption and re-emission may not occur as expected over a certain period of time, but instead seems to have an unusual average time value, with some values being much higher, so for example, let's just say 20 nanoseconds, but in some cases being much lower or even negative, with the average data resembling something like this. And though the actual peak here is at approximately 18 nanoseconds, which is the average time it takes for a typical photon to be re-emitted, as you can see from this graph, sometimes it does actually seem to be negative. Or basically re-emission happened before the atomic excitation was complete. So essentially, as a photon was in a rush and left the atom before the electrons changed their energy. And this does match the theoretical framework and the model really well. Because here this is all based on group delay, and the group delay is approximately 18 nanoseconds. But because a lot of things in quantum physics are based on the wave functions, here the group delay also forms its own wave function, where a lot of values seem to be in the negatives. Which means that for these photons, there are several possible scenarios. In one of the scenarios, they get absorbed and re-emitted as expected. In a second scenario, these photons seem to completely ignore atoms, passing through the medium as if there's nothing in between. Yet in the third scenario, some of the photons do interact with the atom, giving it additional energy, but basically leave the atom or become re-emitted before the atom changes its energy. And due to the uncertainty principle, it's impossible to find out which of the photons did what. Measuring individual photons in this case would be practically impossible. And so all of this has to be assessed through a kind of a quantum lens. These are quantum particles inside the quantum realm, which means that a lot of different outcomes are possible with some of these outcomes appearing as negative time. And so yeah, this is not time travel, this is not photons going back in time, this is basically photons, in some cases, appearing to leave atoms before it should be possible. And this doesn't violate any laws, it has nothing to do with any kind of time travel or Einsteinian principles, but it once again highlights how absolutely bizarre the quantum world actually is, and how sometimes it can result in very counterintuitive conclusions. But in terms of more practical discoveries, here this research can actually help us understand why in some cases, light appears to not travel at constant speeds, specifically when traveling through different absorptive media. But the main discovery in this study is really the fact that negative time seems to be a physically measurable phenomenon, something that one day could be used practically, but obviously nobody knows how. But since rubidium is very often used in things like atomic clocks and quantum computers, one day this discovery might find some use in one of these fields. For now, this is just a really bizarre discovery when it comes to quantum physics, a discovery that reminds us of the bizarre counterintuitive quantum world. But if you want to learn more about other discoveries, check out some of the previous videos in the description, because some discoveries in the last few years were indeed super strange. And so once we learn something else, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.